Hello everyone, I'm fast shooting into episode 9 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, it's time to bring you more stratospheric data. And uh, we're going to be bringing you an update with the latest situation in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole, as well as the uh, latest uh, GFS uh, forecast for the next couple of weeks. And then we'll have some extended range data as well from the UCMWS. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I shall talk you through episode 9 of Strat to Watch for Winter 2023 24. In a moment, let's just say that first. A video series our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, and we're going to be live at 6 p.m. We're going to have our first live stream of 2024. Live stream at 10 to 14 day. So I shall see you a little bit later on for that one, perhaps. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Well, we're going to start off with the scenario at 10 p.m. right now. Over the North Pole, this is from the JMA. So the black line shows how temperatures have been performing at 10 HP in the stratosphere since September. And where we currently are is just here versus the grey line, which is the trend. So actually, we went very cold with the stratospheric temperature briefly around the new year, just before the new year, went down to minus 80 at 10 HPA there, which is a uh, long way under the average, should be around minus 65, something like that. The black line is now on its way back up, so the black line is now beginning to revert, revert back to uh, closer to average after being uh, really quite cold uh, a couple of days ago. That's the beginning of a warming of a strategy that is currently taking place over uh, Russia and Siberia. At 30 HPA, a little bit lower down, closer to the charts here, there we went above average uh, between Christmas and the New Year. We went up to our minus 63, minus 64. We're now dropping at 30 HPA, getting back closer to average, closer to the grey line. Again, nothing overly dramatic going on in terms of the stratospheric temperature. I mean, that's quite cold, minus 80, but it can get colder than that. It can go down to minus 90 sometimes when we have very, very cold stratospheric temperatures, 10 HPA. So, yeah, it did go cold on average, but not overly dramatically so. I'm um, saying true when we go to 30 HPA as well. Nothing overly dramatic taking place at either level of stratosphere, really, with both stratospheric temperatures. Now, this is warming up the stratosphere that's currently occurring over Russia and Siberia, this orange-red area just here, beginning now to start penetrating in towards the north part itself, just starting to lift the temperature uh, back up from the blue colours to the to the green sort of colours, and displacing the uh, polar vortex, that would be blue and purple colours, displacing the polar vortex at its roots out into the, uh, into the, um, Big that shoots out into the North Atlantic, Northern Europe, etc. Well, let's run through over the next couple of days. So, what's happened. so the stratospheric warming intensifying there. <coughs> you mean stratospheric warming intensifying there from Siberia to the North Pole tomorrow, reach its peak on Thursday when we get the, the deep red colours there moving in towards the pole. That should lift the temperature at 10 HPA up. I would imagine it lifted up to around minus 30, minus 40, something like that. So it is a significant one of strategy, here, but probably some way short of what would cause an actual reversal of uh, zona wings, actually. Uh, but warming does ease off quite, ease off gas quite quick. So it does, re but warming does reach uh, certain stratospheric wing type levels there, going to a deep red colours, but only very briefly, and then sort of eases off the gas, which is the reason I think that despite this being a significant warming event, it isn't yet enough to send the zero wind in to reverse and be classified as an SSW. That takes us to uh, the 10th of January, by which time we have got a displaced PV, the blue and purple colour, pushed out from the Arctic into Northern Europe and into the North Atlantic as well. Let's run through the extended range. With the GFS run, so another warming getting going. That one more moderate though, um, around the 12th, 13th, just to get enough though to keep the displacement of them of the PV going, but not a killing blow. And we get to the end of the GFS 12Z run, which gets to the 18th of January, possibly a hint of another warming beginning to start trying to gather there over Europe and pushing up into Russia. Eventually, we're going to crack. This. I'm convinced uh, eventually we will crack this and we will get a, a technical SSW. All these repeated warming events are 
putting the PB into more and more pressure. Eventually, we're going to get one of these warmings that I think will will like split the PV and uh, and send us out of him into reverse. This is some weather is cool, so we can see we are getting a deceleration of Zona Wings currently. So, uh, the, the Zona Wind is another way of depicting the, the polar vortex. So, you can either look at polar vortex in terms of the temperature, how cold the temperatures are, it will be where the polar vortex is and its roots in the stratosphere. The other way, though, to look at polar vortex in the stratosphere, stratospheric polar vortex, is by the Zona Wind. And that's like telling you the strength of the PV. So uh, the uh, polar vortex uh, up to now is this blue line just here. So you can see, like around around Christmas, uh, it was very close to average. The black line is, is average, of course. So deceleration of zero wings taking place. That's just the displacement event that's occurring. Further deceleration of zero wing forecast by GFS ensembles, which have a green line here through the uh, next few days as well. Then it looks like zero wings going to try and strengthen back up again, though, as we go towards the middle part of January. So the wing starts to try and strengthen back up get closer to average. Possibly the hint, though, of another drop in the uh, zone of wind there uh, towards the third week of January. That could be as a result of uh, that next warning that's beginning to appear there around the 18th of January. So, yes, we are getting a weakening of zone of wind, but not a reverse. And remember, to get reverse zone of wind, both green lines are going to go down below this zero line just here, but I'm highlighting. So, actually, we're quite a long way short of reverse zone of wind. About a week or so ago, did look as though this SSW would be enough to set zone of wind into reverse, but uh, well and truly backed off that idea and just a deceleration via a displacement event of the polar vortex um, right now. Let's have a look at uh, the ECM forecast. So, this is uh, predicting uh, uh, temperature numbers at 10 HP a stratosphere of the North Pole. We've got the deep red colours. That is the current warming event that is taking place. You look at that and you'll think you're having a sudden stratospheric warming, you know, a technical SSW. We know it's not going to be enough to send so anything to reverse. So remember, it's an anomaly to average. So the anomaly goes up to 10 degrees or more above average. However, to get an SSW, we've got to go to about 50, 60 degrees above average. So that's probably going to about 20, 30 degrees above average, but falling short of an SSW. That is week two, so the 15th, 22nd of January. Looking pretty warm this time over northern Russia. Uh, again, trying to push that back into the past. That's, good, that's probably going to be another warming that's going there through that week that the ECM is picking up on. So this is, this is the first warming. This is a secondary warming, I think, that the ECM is put, picking up on from the 15th to 22nd of January. I would assume that is starting to turn up within the GFS ensembles of that drop with the green line just there. Uh, right, so that's week two. Week three! <laughs> will be the 22nd, 29th of January. Then we'll begin to start fizzing out a little bit and easing off the gas. Uh, week uh, week 4, 29th of January, 5th of February, actually starting to turn a bit colder. A bit of a cool down going on. Very stratospheric temperature, especially over the Canadian side of the Arctic. And then week 5 is 5th of the 12th of February. So possibly the first hints of another warming then over parts of Russia. Um, is that the one? Is that the one? That could that could well be. Remember, the third one we go through winter, the more likely is we'll get an SSW that will fully send the wing into the first split PV, etc., etc., etc. They normally happen later on in the winter or into the earlier part of the spring. Could that be the start of the SSW that's going to do the business there from the 5th to the 12th of February? It's a long way out, and uh, obviously we will keep you uh, posted on on that. This is the uh, mean zone of wind forecast at 10 HPA for the next six weeks. So again, we confirm that we are getting the deceleration of zone of winds at the moment. So the red line is average. So, so we're going to be a long way under the average for the uh, zone of wind for the strength of the polar vortex. Essentially, you're going to be a significantly weaker than average polar vortex at 10 HPA stratosphere. Uh, uh, over next week. And that, again, is caused by the warming from Russia to Siberia, that's moving in towards the Arctic and causing the displacement event. Then the polar vortex begins to uh, strengthen again with the zero wind, but no 
notice this double, uh, double little drop in the strength PB started to appear here into the third week of um, January. Again, not many GFS ensemble members go for reversal as early wings there, but there are one or two. Um, no, this third week of January, another warming. Could that, could that get as close to a reversal? Then the early wings sort of powers back up, eventually going to early February, uh, just like a seasonal weakening, man, because we go through February, we will see the early wing beginning to weaken conceivably as well, but no definitive side of, of any sort of reverse of zone wings into the first half of February there. So, there we go. That's brought you a date for all things stratosphere wise. So, the significant warming of the stratosphere that uh, we've been talking about for the last two or three weeks over uh, Russia and Siberia is occurring, has occurred actually, and is going to push in towards the pole and cause a displacement event of the polar vortex, which will weaken the PB, weaken the uh, zone of wind. Uh, it's not going to send the zone of wind into reverse, so it will not be a technical sudden stratospheric warming, major sudden stratospheric warming event. Um, and uh, the PB will probably start getting a little bit stronger in about a week's time before maybe weakening again. <laughs> Possibly via another sort of attack um, of warming into the third week of January. It doesn't look like that one either will be enough to send the wind into reverse. And we wait, uh, we'll wait continues for a major sudden stratospheric warming event that will reverse the zone wind at 10 HPA and possibly split the vortex. So we'll keep you updated. Episode 10 will be coming up next Wednesday, same time, same place. And of course, we'll bring you up to date. With all such threat developments through our 10 to 14 days through the rest of the week as well. You enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to see you a little bit later on when we're live at 6. But for Shatch Watch, episode 9, it's for now. And thanks so much.